Hey everyone, it's Kenji. I'm here at my restaurant, Worst Hall in San Mateo, California. Um, it's a Monday night uh, after hours, so we are closed for service right now. Um, so I thought right now might be a good time to show you around the restaurant just so you can see what a restaurant is laid out. Like people have asked me um, how restaurant kitchens work. Um, so here we go, let's take a look, all right? So this is the main dining room right now. We are closed because of uh, coronavirus. So we're using it mainly for paper plate and uh, package storage because that's what most of our business is right now. Up there is the mezzanine. You can rent that out for parties. We also use it for normal uh, service. Over here is the kids table, um, which is again, not being used for anything but storage right now. Um, so let's go through this way. Let me show you the server station. So right here actually is the pass-through. So this window is where um, servers will take uh, dirty dishes and pass them through to the dishwashers who go in here and we'll take a look at that from the other side. Um, on this side, this part is called the pass. So right here, this screen is where all the orders come in from the, uh, the POS system, the uh, point of service system that the waiters uh, put in with their little keypads on their hands. Um, orders come in here so that the person on this side who's called the expediter, um, and that will either be uh, the sous chef or sometimes someone from the front of the house uh, is here. And what their job is to basically coordinate between all the cooks who work on the other side of this line um, uh, about when to get dishes ready so that five different cooks can get all the dishes for the same table ready at the same time. So the person who stands here is called the expediter, that's their job. Um, and then this is called the pass. So this is where all the, sir, each, each different station, um, when they finish a dish, they put it out. Um, we, have a, we have a very sort of streamlined menu right now. So we have basically specific places where dish, different dishes are supposed to go on the pass so that the expediter can grab them easily. Through here is the server station. Um, and in here we got down here there's storage for basically table condiments and extra stuff like that. Right now it's basically empty because we don't have table condiments. Um, this is our our to-go, our, our sort of uh, retail packaging. Uh, pickled Fresno, those are Chef Eric's pickled Fresno chilies. Um, water bottles, coffee machine, tea machine, big industrial ice machine. Um, restaurants go through a lot of ice, both for service um, as well as for sort of things like shocking vegetables and chilling down large quantities of food at a time. Now in here is the dish pit. So this is the this is our industrial dishwasher. If you've never seen one, basically you grab, you lift, lift up this side um, and inside there you can fit two of these trays. Um, so you basically go here, give them a pre-rinse, slide them in. Oh, it looks like they were cleaning fry baskets at the end of the night before they left. Um, you slide two of them in, you slam this down, the machine runs, it takes about two minutes and things come out sanitized on the other side. Um, pots and pan, extra pots and pans up there. Um, over here we got our big ass pots and pans. This is what we use for cooking our uh, potatoes for potato salad and for our triple cooked potatoes. Um, down here, oh these are called hotel pans. So this is a sixth pan, a ninth pan, and a third pan. They're called that because each one of those is a sixth, a ninth, and a third of the size of a full hotel pan. This is a full hotel pan. So if someone says, get me, get me, get me a deep hotel, they're talking about this. Um, they also, we also have shallow hotels, perforated hotels, extra deep hotels. Um, and then all those little pans are just fractions thereof. So you generally have half, third, sixth, and ninth pans of varying depths. Um, different cutting boards for different needs. So um, we do all of our meat cutting downstairs. So you'll see red cutting boards downstairs, but um, the green cutting boards are strictly for vegetables. The white cutting boards are all purpose. Yellow cutting, uh, blue cutting boards are for seafood, but we actually don't do seafood here anymore. So um, those are those kind of just get used for general purpose as well. Um, down this way. Oh, so this is a three compartment sink. This is where we do our big pots and pans. So wash, rinse, sanitize. That's sort of the standard layout for a hotel sink, uh, sort of restaurant sink. Um, these are house knives. So a lot of cooks will bring their own knives and pretty much all of our chefs and sous chefs bring their own knives, but we also have house knives in case people want to use them or in case they forgot their own. Um, a hand wash sink. This one is on a, a knee lever so that you can turn it on and off without having to touch it with um, potentially contaminated hands. Uh, hand wash stations are very important at restaurants and mandated by health code, the positioning of them. Um, our dual fryers, so we, we go through a lot of fried potatoes and a lot of fried chicken here. Um, the big fryer is for meat, the smaller fryer is uh, vegan, but uh, we use both of them pretty much at capacity all the time because people love fried food with their beer and we serve mostly beer. Um, now on the line there's various stations, so on this line we have 
saute station here, which has all these burners. Although currently with COVID, we don't really use the, we don't really have many dishes coming off of saute station. So this is mostly used for prep. Um, but here, this is where um, all of our smash burgers come from, um, our impossible burgers. Down here is where our sausages come from. And on each station, across from it, on the other side, you have one refrigerated part. Um, and there are these drawers that pull out. So up here, so we have our sauerkraut quesadillas, various cheeses, condiments. And then below is where all the meat goes. Uh, so right now, this is our impossible meat and this is our regular burger meat. Um, and that's sort of standard layout for most kitchens. You have these drawers that pull out on the line. And then up above, you have all your various garnishes and, and side ingredients. Um, and you can see these, these things are all designed to fit various size hotel pans. So you can slot different, ho different pans in and out, third pans, ninth pans, half, um, six pans, depending on uh, what you need. So the layout of, this, of, of these, these things is something that um, you optimize for efficiency. Um, so a lot of time, you know, when I was first designing the line of this restaurant and designing menu items, what I would do is I would have um, it, on graph paper, I would draw out that line and I would write down on paper and figure out exactly what I'm going to fit into each slot sort of to optimize the efficiency here. And then of course, as um, service goes on and you, and you find some things are used more than others, you iterate and you, and you modify and then the cooks sort of eventually take over their own station um, and figure out what the best optimal way to arrange those things is. But the idea is that you, you want, when you're cooking in a restaurant, you want to be able to have everything that you need within hand's reach without having to move from your spot. So you turn around, you cook, you turn around, you have your things ready to go. You don't really have to move from the space very much. Um, down here, we normally have bun storage, um, as well as um, at the very bottom, we have uh, um, bins for used saute pans, stuff like that. Um, up top, normally we would have stacks of saute pans and we would have our plates uh, for service, but right now we're doing all compostable plates because we don't um, have full service during uh, coronavirus. Um, this is sausage station. Right now we have all these little sort of, ch we changed our me menu recently. Um, so we have these kind of cheat sheets just for the cooks to use as a reference that they can study while they're waiting. Um, and then over here is garde manger where sort of like salads and cold dishes, stuff like that come from. Um, salads, deviled eggs, various things like that. Uh, these are our CVAP ovens. So these hold very precise temperature to within a degree um, and also precise steam level. So um, they're essentially, they can be used, um, thought of sort of as bagless sous vide. Um, so what we do is mainly we use these to cook our sausages. We also pre-cook the chicken for our, um, our seared chicken sandwiches in there. But our sausages go in there at the beginning of service, 100% uh, steam, 140 degrees. Um, and uh, that's Fahrenheit, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And then they take about uh, 45 minutes or so to come up to temperature there. And then they can basically be held at that temperature without losing any quality um, because, of the, because of the steam and because of the precise temperature. Um, they don't overcook, they don't dry out, they, um, they hold very well. So that when someone orders it, you then open this up, grab the sausage that you need, put it over here on the flat top to sear it. Um, and then within four minutes of the time that someone orders it, we can get a sausage to their table that's perfectly cooked, perfectly browned. Um, we know reliably juicy time after time. Um, four minutes is sort of our internal standard for how long, for pickup time. So pickup time is uh, the time that a ticket comes into the kitchen till the time that the food can be out of the pass. We set a four minute limit on that for every, so every single dish at a restaurant um, from the time it's ordered till the time it's served, it, it can be done within four minutes, which means a lot of prep work. Um, this is, the, <coughs> excuse me, this is the backup fridge. So um, I don't know what's in there right now. There we go, backups of mustard, potato salad, various condiments and things that we go through a lot that don't all fit on the line. Um, they'll leave them here so that when they need them, they can just reach over and grab them. And let's go down, actually let's stop behind the bar first. So this is our bar. Um, we have 28 taps, I think it's 28. Um, I'm gonna pour myself a beer. 28 taps, including uh, some nitro taps. Uh, what do I want? Fieldwork, Fieldwork is a local, uh, local brewery, IPA, um, very good. 28 taps, uh, including some wine and some nitro taps. We currently don't have all of them full because of COVID. So some of these, you see the handles are not on. Um, none of the wine handles are on. Um, all of our barware, our logoed barware. And on this side of the bar, you'll see, um, oh, down here we have cocktails and soft drinks and stuff like that in these low boys. Um, 
On this side, you see sort of like a mini version of the dish pit. So over here is a single rack um, dishwasher, also washes in about two minutes. Um, hand wash sink. This is our three compartment sink here. So uh, wash, rinse, sanitize. Um, another, another hand wash sink, our ice bucket here. Um, let's see, all right, let's go downstairs and take a look, all right? So we're going to, downstairs is where we have our prep kitchen. By the way, our kitchen is not ideally laid out. Ideally, you wouldn't have to walk up and down stairs between prep and uh, service, but you know, here we are. Uh, the, these are the pigs that I put here for my daughter. I bought them all at Ikea. I put them here because she likes seeing them every time she comes in. And we'll go down this way. Oh, while we're here, so this, um, oh, hi. This, we finished building out um, after, the sh after the pandemic, after the shutdown. So this has not been used yet, but it is ready to be used as soon as we are open again, or as soon as we're able to take guests again. Um, so this is a bookshelf. There's going to be, you know, one of those secret, you, you pull a book and then on a pneumatic thing, this bookshelf is going to open up. And you are inside our new bar. Um, we're calling this Wunderbar. You know, going with the whole German word theme, pun, clever, haha. -ha. Um, I think it's pretty nice. What do you think? I think it's pretty nice. Right now we just use it for meetings um, because it allows us to have some privacy and also keep our distance from each other. Um, but it's going to be pretty cool. Um, so these tables here, they... They fold down, well right now it's blocked by a keg, but they fold down um, for when we're busy, like on a Friday or Saturday night, but on a normal weeknight, they pull up so that you can seat two people there. Um, I think it's all pretty slick. All right. Let's get going. Uh, oh, two-way mirror, so you can, you can see out from here, but you can't see in from here. Of course, that's not true right now because the lights inside the bar are on. Um, but normally when the lights inside the bar are off, that's how it's gonna work. All right, this way is the prep kitchen. This is our prep kitchen. Um, let's start by looking at sous chef Eric's sausage room. This is the sausage room. So this is where the sausage is made. Um, we have our grinder, grinder parts stored in rice so that they uh, stay nice and dry. Um, over here we have our sausage mixer um, as well as our piston, um, piston style sausage stuffer. Um, and over here is a dry aging, uh, aging fridge. I'm not sure what he's got in there right now, but it looks like, looks like two different types of pancetta. We'll see what those are. Um, in here is our walk-in freezer. Um, mainly we use it for potatoes, sausages, and buns. So right now you can see these are our potato, our triple cooked potatoes. So what we do is we cook them once um, by boiling them with baking soda, uh, bay leaf, garlic, and black peppercorn until they're soft. Uh, and then we take them out of the oil, rough them up. We give them one fry at a relatively low temperature. Then we put them onto these sheet trays uncovered into the freezer for at least one night um, and that helps the exteriors dry out um, and, and also sort of creates a, as they freeze, there's a crystalline uh, water, you know, the water freezes into ice crystals and that crystalline structure breaks up um, some of the cells on the inside so it makes it easier for the water to then evaporate when you fry it a second time. So we fry them straight from frozen the second time to order uh, and they come out extraordinarily crisp like sort of like they almost have like a sort of glass like texture on the outside but, but it's like chewing glass but in a pleasant way um, we also freeze most of our sausages um, sausages and a lot of well almost any cured meat and especially fatty cured meat and our sausages are quite fatty um, freeze extremely well uh, so freezing them allows us to basically make sure that we have enough sausages um, so, so that we can focus on one sausage at a time rather than trying to produce um, a little bit of every batch of sausage. It's all about efficiency. Um, and here is our regular walk-in, walk-in fridge. Um, so we got 
meat over here, cured meats at the top, raw meats at the bottom. Um, also, that's also just sort of a basic food safety thing. Chicken is separate from the other meat. Over here is our prepared foods. Um, so pickles, I guess chopped ingredients for some sauces that they're going to be making, various sauces that are already made. Um, yeah, all the different sauces that are made over here. Oh, these are chicken bites. So we do a similar process to our fried potatoes where um, we fry them once at a low temperature. The chicken we do once at, um, both our chicken bites and our regular fried chicken sandwiches, we do them once at 250 degrees for about 15 minutes um, until they are cooked through. Um, they are not crispy at that point, but what we do is then we put them in the, put them on trays into the walk-in um, overnight uncovered so that, again, so that the exterior can dry out a little bit so that when you cook them a second time to order, you fry them at a higher temperature to order, um, they come out extraordinarily crispy. So these chicken bites and chicken wings, I've had them, um, I brought some home and put them on my counter uh, and let them sit overnight and they're still crunchy crispy the next day. Um, what else do we have? Okay, so over here is all our vegetables. Right now the walk-in is pretty uh, lean because, well, first of all, we're operating lean uh, because of COVID, but also because we were closed today. So we'll get a big delivery of produce in tomorrow. And then this is all our dairy over here. More containers, you can never have enough containers. When I set up this restaurant, I ordered a bunch of containers thinking it'd be enough. And then of course, it was like a third of what we actually needed. So we added, added more and more and more and more and more. And then you have different containers with different sizes and it becomes a nightmare and then he throws them out. And you have to get new ones. Anyhow, uh, all right, so this is our vacuum sealer. Um, we don't vacuum seal the cook anymore because we do everything in the CVAP, but we vacuum seal a whole lot of stuff for storage. Um, this is our regular mixer. And then this is our like big ass industrial mixer. Um, this is a Robocoop, which is a basically a very high powered uh, food processor um, with some bells and whistles. And then this is our Vitamix, also just a very high powered blender. Um, oh, and then this is the this is the real big Robocoop. This guy does um, all kinds of stuff. So this one dices vegetables. It shreds cheese. It uh, well, that's about it. It dices things and it shreds things, but it does it really fast. Um, more sinks. Uh, this is dry goods over here and pickles. Uh, so this is where we, where we ferment all of our sauerkraut and our pickles. Um, big, uh, I don't know what those are. I think those are 20 gallon, 15 gallon uh, containers that we, that we pickle at a time. And uh, dry goods, spices, more stuff. Um, this is oils and canned things. And then this is the, uh, this is the office. Very exciting. And then what else is there to show? Oh, um, let me take you through over to here. So this is our beer walk-in. So this is where all of our kegs are. Um, so all of these kegs, they run on these lines that run all the way upstairs to the tap system. So the taps pull straight out of these kegs. So uh, if we run out of one beer and the bartender says they need to go change a keg, they are coming down here to do that. Oh, this thing is pretty cool. So some of our beers um, are nitro beers, which, um, so nitrogen is what gives you that sort of foamy, if you think of Guinness, it gives you that sort of really foamy creaminess. Um, that's a nitrogen uh, infused beer. So we have this nitrogen tank um, rather than having to swap out that nitrogen tank every time it gets empty, um, we have this machine, which is, uh, it extracts nitrogen from the air um, and it pushes it into that tank so that we never run out of nitrogen. It's sort of, it's sort of like, I think of it as sort of like the, uh, you know, like an instant hot water heater, uh, like an on-demand hot water heater, but for nitrogen instead of hot water. Um, anything else to show you? I think that's about it. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that quick tour. Um, if you have any questions or if I missed anything or if you saw anything uh, that you want more details about, um, leave, a, leave a question in the description and I, uh, leave a question below and I will do my best to answer them. Um, and if you saw anything that was like a health code violation or anything like that, also let me know because I would like to make sure that we fix that. I don't think I saw anything questionable today and we usually keep nice and clean. So um, I hope nobody saw anything. All right. Uh, see you later, guys, gals, non-binary pals, next time.